The most commonly asked question I get is why is Body Slims different? And it's a good question because so many people have tried so many things and maybe they had some success and then less so or, or maybe it was just an outright scam. But an awful lot of people have tried an awful lot of different things. So it's, it's a fair question to ask. And the honest truth is there are so many ways Body Slims is different that, you know, this video would not be long enough to actually go through them all. But I'm going to try and touch on some of them, if I may, for you. And the first point of difference, I suppose, I'd have to bring you right back to the start. So when I started Body Slims, I was in a very lucky position in my life. I had divested from all my businesses in which I had been reasonably successful. And in other words, I was not dependent on Body Slims, which allowed me to play around a little bit with it as a business. And I'd always had this kind of you know, I could do a business plan, forward projections, the feasibility study with my eyes closed. Now, they're all great things. I'm not kind of dismissing them in any way, shape or form. However, I always wanted to wonder, what would happen if you concentrated 100% on the product and you didn't look at the franchise ability, the scalability, the business model? In other words, you just worked to make it the best weight loss program in the world with no plan. And that's what I started out with. So I spent the guts of two years, it took longer than I thought it would, studying, ever trying to pull this incredible thing that it's become together, but without a plan of where it was going to go or what it was going to do, just doing this. How do we make this the best weight loss program in the world? That's all I worked to. If it had failed, you know, it would have been a disappointment, but nothing more. I was very lucky, as I say, I was in a situation in my life where I was able to do that. So let me talk about the first thing that I, I would sort of say is, is a large point of difference. When I was, during this period, when I was starting to put it together, I was studying everything I could find, every academic paper written, and I have a background in sport and coaching and things like that. So, you know, I, 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 there was some crossover. But the thing that blew me away was a thing called the National Weight Control Registry, which is, uh, I think it was 94 it was started, Brown, um, Brown Medical School in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and I'll tell you why this was amazing to me. Right at the start, I knew loads of people and they'd lost weight, lost a stone or lost two stone, and then they seemed to have put it back on. And it occurred to me, this is far more a problem with weight maintenance, maintaining the weight loss, than it is just the actual weight loss. And this National Weight Control Registry is the only major survey. It's, it's amazing information, but it's the only major one done in the world. And they still do it up to today. And this is a study of over 10,000 people who had lost on average two and a half stone. That would be about 35 pounds. And they had maintained that weight loss for five and a half years. But this is where it got brilliant. They then went into all the habits of these people, everything from what they eat, the exercise they take to the number of TV hours they watch a day. Which means that we're able to, to actually see this is the recipe for successful weight maintenance. And what I said is, okay, that works for weight maintenance. How about if I tweak it? If I tweak that and change it a little bit to make it effective for weight loss. So at the end of the program, at the end of the 10 weeks, not only are the people knowledgeable about what they would need to do, but more importantly, they're practiced, they're skilled. So they've basically been doing the same thing for 10 weeks. On week 10 of the seminars, I actually go into weight maintenance and I give people, but the change that they have to make is not that drastic. In actual fact, one of the options is just do what you were doing, but take the weekend off, have what you want. You know, you can have your weekend, but you can't do it every day. I mean, I, I say all this sort of stuff and I explain it to people, you can have it all. You can go out on your Saturday night at the size and shape you want to be, have the meal, have the drink. 
But you can't go out every night of the week doing that. You know what I mean? That may be more the behavior people had before they came. And the reason I did this is I felt so much of this stuff that's out there. You know, people were doing things. So it's a bit like, you know, somebody's doing a juicing. And, you know, two weeks juicing. Like, what do you learn? What new skill do you learn? Well, none. Not really, other than juice makes me go to the toilet a lot. You, you don't, and it's not something you can carry on, is it? You can't go out, you know, a year from now as a business dinner and you go, I'd like four litres of orange juice and a large straw sitting at the table. It's, it's, it's not practical. It's the same with the meat only and the keto and no carbs and, you know, all the, the crazy crackpot diets where people are, they're doing something and then they're going to have to change completely. And what are they going to do? Because I know a little bit about people. What they're going to do is go right back to what they were doing before. Yeah, that's the, that's the reality. The next thing I would talk about. So, by the way, all the principles of successful weight maintenance, I have like a tapestry built in throughout Body Slim. So the people become practiced from week one. I'm actually thinking about where they're going to be after the program. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, I always find this amazing. My own background's alcoholism. You know, I, I was a chronic alcoholic and I was going to die. I won't bore you with my story, but, um, you know, and that, that was when I was 23. It's a long time ago. I, I thankfully, touch wood, I, I stopped and, and have managed to stay stopped. But one of the things that I thought with the food industry is everyone just talks about food. They talk about weight and they don't really talk about the people. I see overweight as a symptom. It's a symptom. It's not the cause. Yeah, it's not the cause. So alcohol and my alcoholism and all the things that were happening in my life and the batterings that I took and the way my body was, that was the symptom. But what was the cause? What was causing me to want to drink the way I was? When other people didn't do that, other people wouldn't have let themselves get into that state. And it always intrigued me. But that's what we go after in Body Slims, the cause. I talk about food one week. Imagine it like this. Imagine you went to see your doctor. You know, you, you woke up one day and on the left side of your face, you had a big red rash. You go down to your doctor and your doctor said to you, um, yeah, that's a bad rash. Go and get this topical cream, just smear it all on, empty the tube. And you'd go, you'd go to the pharmacy, you'd do that, you, and it works. The next week, you wake up, the rash again, the left-hand side of your face. You, you know where I'm going with this. How, how long would it be before you say to the doctor, and in fairness, you probably wouldn't need to because any GP worth their salt is gonna say, we need to find the cause. And that could be an allergy. It could be so many things, but we would actually go after it. We couldn't and wouldn't spend our entire lives trying to just treat the symptom. And that's what I feel a lot of weight loss programs do. They don't get into you. As I say, one week of the program, I speak about food because I have to give you some information because that, that's not made easy for you either. However, this one week out of 10 weeks, I speak about food and the rest of the time I'm talking about you. Because what are the causes? You know, like, this is what I'm saying. If we go after the, the cause rather than the symptom, we have to address the symptom. I get it, people come to me because they want to lose weight and we do that, but we also go after the cause. Now, the cause is going to be myriad, different things for different people, different parts of, you know, I do this and I do that. Could be a lack of information, it can be limiting beliefs. It, it can be just your wrong focus in your life, you're being too busy, all this sort of stuff. That, you know, we don't need to, to kind of go into it because I'll explain how you extrapolate this out. When you start trying to look at that, you're going to end up with a hundred different things. Somebody doesn't know enough about nutrition. Somebody else eats too late at night. Somebody else is eating too many carbs. Somebody else eats the sugar. So what we actually have to do and the way I work is I break it all down into a box. And that box is called your habits. You, me, every one of us, we are humans, are habitual creatures. You're not as spontaneous as you like to think, I'm afraid. And what that means is you get up in the morning We'll just call, I don't know your exact routine, but you go into the bathroom, you brush your teeth, don't you? 
You don't kind of go, would I get another day out of them? You don't actually have a debate about it. You just do it. And you do it at pretty much the same time, in the same place, the same toothbrush, every day in the same way. And then maybe you go downstairs and you have a coffee. And I know some people go, well, I have my coffee first. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's whatever you have. But what you're going to find is we repeat. We repeat. And all these causes are going to be manifest in your habits, okay? So all the causes how they actually move into an action step is your habit. That's it. So the, the habit is a manifestation of the cause and you, my friend, are nothing more than a manifestation of your habits. That's how important this is. First you form the habit and then the habit forms you. Imagine you and I were out and we'll say we were in a coffee shop and I said to you, See that man over there, tell me about him. You'd go, I know nothing about him. I don't work for the FBI, why are you asking me? I know nothing about the man. And we'll imagine this man is maybe overweight, maybe sweaty shirt or whatever, looking under pressures, bought a coffee, bought the cake, and sitting down and maybe not looking all that well. And I say to you, tell me about him. You go, I don't know. And I say, okay, well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Would you say this man is very nutritionally aware? And you go, no, now, now that I have a look at him, he doesn't look that particularly nutritionally aware. Would you say he's a fellow who never eats a takeaway? You go, and he looks like a fellow who'd eat a takeaway, all right. Would you say he's a fellow who does a lot of exercise? Oh, God, he looks, doesn't look like a fellow who's ever does a bit of exercise. We can actually extrapolate a huge amount of information from this person based on how they look. It's not clinically accurate to go 100% of the time will be 100% right, but the vast majority of the time will be absolutely right. And equally, if the, you know, a girl comes in and she's in shape or you know, she goes up and she buys her skinny whatever drink they buy, and I say, tell me about this girl. Does she look like someone who's on the takeaways? Oh, God, no, she doesn't. Does she look like somebody who'd be drinking you know, a bottle of wine? A day? God, no, she doesn't. Now you say it. Do you think, do you think she be, takes a bit of exercise? God, she looks like a girl who'd take care of herself. You get it? We are a manifestation of our habits. You wear your habits. And we have to go after these habits. And this is what I think most programs ignore. On Body Slims, what we're trying to do is these habits, because these will be the action step from the cause, yeah? The cause is there. The habits are the action step. We have to remove those habits and replace them with good new ones that do serve you. And good habits are as addictive as bad habits. That's the funny thing. Nothing in Body Slims is co coincidental. Body Slims is a 70-day program. 66 days is the average length of time it takes to install a new habit that does serve you and for it to reach something called the asymptote of automacy, which is a very fancy uh, geometry term. And what it means is it should go on forever, lines that don't touch. This is the terminology used. So Body Slims is 70 to seven days and the length of time it takes to form that new habit and hopefully to keep it for life is 66 days. Hugely important and I spend a huge amount of time dealing and talking about this and challenging you to change these in a fun way, in a way in which you can rebuild yourself. And the last of them I suppose I'll, I'll just, because I don't want to go on too long, um, the last of them would probably be, I'd say, what I use, so which is called the Shanachie method. It's an Irish thing. So the Shanachie is the storyteller. In history, before we had writings, the writings are man-made and they're not around as long as language. How did we impart information to other generations? You know, because we had to impart important information our history, the history of the tribe, where the best feeding areas are, what to be careful of, huge amount of stuff, a huge amount of store of knowledge. And we as humans are built in a way whereby we can take in and remember stuff 
if it's delivered in a certain way, which people probably find frustrating because they're going, you seem to go on and on and on. They do, but there's a reason for it. Everything I do, I do for a reason because the way I work, not only will you hear it, not only will you apply it, but it will stay in your mind long after you, you're asking it to leave. You know, five years later, you'll be in a supermarket and you'll see something like bread and you go, there's a bread, a bastard. The man told me, like it, 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 the words will come back as you need them. How does that work? So this was the, met the methodology that was used was I, I trying to keep the storyteller, but it was also poetry and it was also song. We are exposed to so much information on a daily basis from your TV, the news, the radio, the, you click online, messages coming into you. Stuff. <coughs> There's a huge amount of information. I guarantee you, if an hour after you watched, we're watching a film, and I said to you, tell me the ads that were on during the ad break, because you watched them. I guarantee you won't remember them. You heard them an hour before. If I say to you, Jack and Jill went up the hill, what do you think they were going up for? They were going to go to get a pail of water, of course. Like, Jack and Jill went up the hill to get a pail of water. You know, we've all heard it, haven't we? Now, when did you last hear that? Well, maybe when you were five. Have you used it on a daily basis? I haven't. In fact, I haven't thought about it since I was five. How come you can remember it now? Yeah, there's a skill to this. This was incredibly important, incredibly important ways of passing information down to generations. Song, poems, verse, rhymes, whatever you want to call it, and stories. If the story, if the story is told in the right way, not only does the mind hear it, not only does it understand it, but it remembers it and it remembers it forever again the maintenance, you know, because these overlap. But I want people, when they're going forward, for this stuff to be retained, that they actually know the stuff, they're skilled in it because they practiced it during the 10 weeks, they changed the habits during the 10 weeks to new ones that do serve them, and hopefully they're designed to go on to the asymptote of automacy. So there you go, I mean, I could keep going. The wonderful team and body slims, the ease of the... I could go through so many things that I think make us different, but they're probably the key ones. I suppose the other thing I should say as well is we're a family business. And when we went into this, we went into it and we said we will be ethical to the end. No bars, no lotions, no potions, no pills, no upsells, nothing. We don't do that. Would we make more money doing it? We would. Do we do it? No. Do we have always on? Because when you go online, people always go, oh, you have to have it always on, always on. You'll make loads of money. No, we don't and we won't. Why? Because we know this is the most effective way for our customers to get the results. Remember what I said right at the start. How do we make this the best weight loss program in the world? That's what we started with. And it's what still drives us today. A lot of people's are good enough to say, it's not for us to say, they feel we got there. But that's what drives us every single day. How do we make this the best? Not the most commercial, but the best. Hence, we stick to our values. We'll go, no, we do three courses here. We're all in. Me, the team, the customers, we're all in it together. We work it through. Because I know so many of you guys are procrastinators. The moment I say you can do it always, I can click at any time, you won't do it. You know that, I know that. That's a part of the reason you got here. I'll start my diet when? Next week. <laughs> yeah, and of course, Monday never comes, does it? You know, like, next, sorry, next week or tomorrow never comes. Like, it, it, it's, it's how it is. So, I hope that makes some sense Yeah, I hope it, it, it provides some kind of illumination in this. Why are we different? Uh, too many ways to go through them all. I've tried to hit some of the principal ones there for you. If I ever get to work with you at any stage, it'll be a privilege and a pleasure. And in the meantime, I hope you keep very, very well, and I will talk to you soon.